Well, welcome to the first ever Aero Podcast. I'm here at Lanesville High School. We're going to talk about uh, legacy basketball and state championships, and we're so excited to have you guys tuning in today. Um, if you can't tell, some of them are really nervous, but we're going to take a deep breath, we're going to have fun, and we're just going to talk about something that all four of us love, which is which is basketball. So um, uh, give us a little bit about yourself. One, I'm going to ask you guys questions, and you can answer in this direction. Your name, how long you've been coaching, and how long you've been coaching at Lanesville. Oh gosh, you need to ask that. Well, my name is Angie Hinton, and uh, I've been coaching uh, for quite a long time. I guess I started back in um, 1987-ish. Yeah, about 1987. I actually coached at Shawnee High School for a year, and then I moved to Scribner, coached a couple years there. Uh, coached New Albany for hmm, 11, 11 years, I think. Uh, I had to go back. I'm, I'm terrible about that, but then I took a little hiatus for a while um, and just kind of raising my kids and just doing things with the kids and then picked back up um, when my daughter got in high school. Um, I, I kind of coached her A team, trial team through the years and then started coaching at North Harrison, uh, assistant coach there when she got to high school in like 2014. So for those four years, I was at North. And then from 2018 till now, I've been at Lanesville. Well, that's awesome. Well, let's run, skip Pally for a second because you mentioned New Albany. What's your name? Where did you play high school basketball and how do you know coach? My name is Lacey Crozier. was Lacey Ferris. Um, Angie had coach, started coaching me, I think, when I was 10. I have a picture of that. Um, so came up through New Albany and played for her through high school. That's awesome. It's actually funny. So... Um, BJ McAllister, which is the AD at New Albany right now, hired me to do a state video of like their history and stuff like that. And I edited it and there was someone named Lacey because like I put the 1999 video in there. I was like, man, that looks just like her. That's crazy though because like it's not the same name though, but I didn't put two and two together like maiden names and stuff. But now I'm here together and I'm figuring out all this. So you coached, you were coached by her in 1999 and you won a state championship, right? Was, my was that year. your senior year? Yep. Okay. But she took us all the way up from when we were young too. Okay. You know, coached us in AAU. Did you guys? Did, also. did you guys have any postseason success from freshman year to junior year, like before you won the state championship? Yeah, in freshman year, uh, we won the sectional, um, and we won the regional, and then we got beat at some state. And then sophomore year, we won the sectional and regional, and got beat at some state. Uh, then junior year, we got beat by Jeffersonville, and I think they made it to uh, regional. I think they got beat in the regional also, um, and that's when they had Sarah Nord, Mary Jo Noon. They they had uh, so they were stacked. They, yeah, they they were stacked team too. Um, and then senior year, of course, you know, then we won every game that year, so that was pretty cool. So you did go undefeated that year. Yes. I did not know that. That's crazy. How did that feel? Well, it was pretty amazing. And back then, what was that, the second year for class basketball? So after state, we had to play in the tournament of champions. You know, you think you're done, you're on cloud nine, and then we have to play all the other state champions. Um, and so that was a, a little, had a lot of pressure to it. But How did that go? We won. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does it add, like, like right now, there's – in my time of filming sports, Ben Davis is the only undefeated team that we've like filmed or seen. How does that like play into the rest of your year? Like, does every game feel like there's pressure to win, or was were you guys did your team just click so good that it was just like you guys just played? Like, how did how, how did that work the whole season? Like, once you got like ten and out, how did it feel like okay, well we're gonna keep going undefeated? Well, you have a target on your back at that point. I felt like you were like every yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. I f- Felt like we had a target on our back, and no matter what we did, we had to come out and play to the best of our ability because everybody wanted to beat us. Yeah, we were we were also ranked uh, one, two in the state, you know, through most of the year. So, you know, it it was a lot of pressure, uh, but we had a, a very talented team. We had a very deep team, and I think our JV team also won every game. So it, it kind of got to be, you know, we're all kind of working together. We're trying to go out every game you know, play our best, and yes, we, we had a target on our back. But at the same time, I think the kids really took it as a challenge, um, you know, every time because we were so disappointed in the year before that we knew, and this was our senior year, 
they all wanted to, you know, compete every every game. They did want to end the season like the last year. So, um, you know, our schedule was tough, you know, but we, we had been there. We had had success. So the kids really didn't know how to handle success. Um, and, and, and it was a lot of fun, too. The community really got behind us and supported us. And It looked like it from the video. Watch it. looked like there's a ton of Guavi fans there. Yeah, we, we really, uh, you know, it, it, it was kind of like a, a, a small Romeo-type stage, yeah. you know, for girls. Because our gym was full of life, you know, wasn't, you know, sold out or anything. But we had a great following, you know, with us. So that made it fun to come out and play every game. Um, so so know, while, we, while we're in 1999... And you being the coach, how do you, like, is there any certain, like, pillars of coaching that were determined that year after winning at the highest level of high school basketball that you've taken with you from 1999 now as, as a coach? Well, you know, the, the experience that, that we had, you know, in dealing with, with those situations definitely uh, was, has, has been helpful to me and helped me in coaching, you know, going back and coaching young kids and, you know, building the program up and, you know, taking it, you know, coaching my own kids and uh, other kids. Uh, you, you just know how to handle things a little bit better. You know, Lacey says I'm softer. I think I'm just, you know, uh, I'm I'm a little more seasoned, I guess. You know, you just know how to handle things a little bit better and, and in all situations. And you, you just kind of know, you know, the, the scheme of things. You know how you got to get things done. Just, uh, you know, how to get uh, people doing things with you and for you uh, to help with the program. And uh, so, you know, it made it a lot easier. And, and it, it's a little more enjoyable this time around, too, uh, because you've been through it. And even though the pressure is there, you just know how to take the pressure off the kids as much as possible. Yeah. And we don't forget, this is Hattie. We kind of got talking basketball. We got excited. We forgot about Hattie Crozier, who just won the state championship. Um for 1A girls basketball. And the reason that we're even here, I hope I, I shot right past it, is this is Hadley's mom. And this is Hadley. And they were both coached by a coach and won a state championship, one in 1999 and one in 2023, which is honestly like, it's there's only one word to describe it. It's like legacy. Like, that's just the coolest thing. I, I remember when I found it out, that because I didn't know that you were the coach back then, and somebody told me, I was like, I have to get there and talk to them about this because this is the coolest thing. So Hadley, you growing up, of course, with your mother, you've seen that, that she was a part of the state team. What was that like for you, knowing that your mom won with coach and then you getting coached by coach to win another state championship? How does that feel? Um, well, it was kind of crazy at first. It didn't really set in because she had always talked about going to state, and I was like, okay, and that's like a really big, big thing that I'll, everybody says, like, oh, your team's going to win state, but like I never really thought it was true. But, I mean... And then we just kept winning and winning. And then when we were there, it was kind of like, I don't know. I remember watching my mom's state game on YouTube a lot. And so just like seeing that atmosphere, I was like, okay, like this is the same exact thing. I'm just going to go out and play. Yeah. What was it like? So you scored the first basket of the entire game. Yeah. How you, it's funny if you watch me, like there's nothing, like you didn't do anything bad, but you got so excited. And then I was like, oh, I got to play defense. defense. Yes. What was that like when that first shot went in, how'd that feel? Well, at first when I shot it, I was like, oh, great. This better go in. and coach is going to be really mad at me. Because she always tells us, like, get an easy bucket first. And then I just shot a three. First play of the game, I was like, oh, gosh. But then it went in. And then I was, like, wanting to celebrate. I was like, okay, like, nerves over. And then I was like, I got to guard this girl. You're, like, clapping. And then you're like, yeah. you can see your eyes. You're like, oh, I got to go back. Yeah. If you, I didn't use audio on any of it because I was kind of embarrassed. But if you go back and watch it, as soon as the ball goes in, I, I literally said it's over. Like, the game is, like. All the girl, all your teammates saw the first basket going in. You hit a three. It's like it's over. Like there's not a shot. So going into the stands from that game, uh, I walked past you, and your is that your youngest son, or do you have a younger one? That's he was beyond ecstatic for the entire game. I got something. He had his like foam finger. What was it like watching your daughter? So I I have a one year old now, so I have a kid like, and I got emotional like him eating a cake the other day. But like watching your kid play at the highest level of high school basketball, like. It doesn't like, like what emotions, like, was it like a wave of emotion? Or was it like the whole day was one emotion? Like, what was that for you? Well, the whole, the whole morning I was nervous. Like, I knew they had it, but I had text coach. I was sitting in the um, lobby of the hotel, and We Are the Champions came on. I was drinking my coffee. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think this is a sign. And so, <laughs> I'm just nervous, nervous, nervous. And Yo and I see her, and I 
cry a little bit, and I get it together, and see her again, cry a little bit more. And then when she hit the bathroom, I was like, okay, we're gonna be all right. Like, we're gonna be all right. The nerves not getting to them as much as I thought they might. If she texts me, I just woke up. Me and Hilton were in the same room, and I just woke up. Vince is banging on my door, so I'm like trying to get up and like go into the door, and then she's like, I'm drinking my Starbies, and we have the champions coming on. It's just a really, I just really feel it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, like 30 yeah. people had already texted me. I don't know. I it's a song with Starfio. And so, it's, yeah, it's a song. It has to be. You guys have to run. So, talk about your guys' family. So, you know, like you get to watch your daughter play. Tell us a little bit, because I want to know more personally, like, what is the coaching legacy of your family? Because you have a son that coaches, you had a daughter that did coach, I don't know if she's taking a break, your husband. Like, tell me tell me about everybody that is the history of basketball in your immediate family. Well, uh, first, you know, my husband, Joe, he's coach. He's in the Hall of Fame, uh, Indiana Hall of Fame. Which so. he will be here shortly, hopefully, so. Well, he he's in there now, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and I always say, I, he's helped me all along the way, even when I very first started with, with Lacey at New Albany. Joe was in the background helping, you know, with the teams and all the way up through and different practices and things. And, you know, so he, he's my knowledge base. You know, he's just had this super, super intelligent mind when it comes to basketball. And, you know, just learning from him, I used to go watch his practices, you know, just to learn different drills and different things, you know, watching coach, watching decisions that he makes. So having him on the, on the bench has been just uh, tremendous. And then, yes, my son Joseph, he coaches at Corden High School. And, you know, I, he's also worked with some of my girls in the summertime, too. When I first started coaching, I was like, you know, I need your help, you know, with, with doing some individual things with kids. And uh, he was really good about working with, you know, several bar girls. And so, you know, he's kind of a part of this, too. He's just kind of quiet quiet part and he and I talk a lot of basketball uh just his his thought in the game you know, he played in Oakland City he played in high school and uh he's got a different perspective on things so having him and, and that kind of fresh perspective is, has been very good for me uh, my daughter Hallie she was on our bench this year okay. and she uh she played you know in high school is a very good player and her team was very successful and but just her knowledge base of um uh, just having been there, you know, and just recently, you know, it was 2016 and 17, she was at State. Lacey brought the kids up to watch, you know, that that was really cool because she brought all these little Lanesville kids up to watch North Harrison play. And, you know, this was before any thoughts came so were you coaching it? I, I was, no, I was coaching North Harrison. Oh, you were coaching okay. Yeah, so she brought the kids up because she'd been working with the kids. Um, and, you know, she brought them up and it was just really cool. You know, I got to meet them for the first time. I hadn't met them before. And so that was kind of a, the first experience of actually seeing them. And then, you know, I did go watch them play um, in some AAU that next summer. But, you know, really I had not had any intentions of going to lane zone coaching there. Uh, my, my thoughts were, as I'm, I'm going to retire. I'm done. My, my daughter's out of high school. And I'm just going to kind of, you know, do something, do some other things. So uh, that's when... Things opened up, you know, I started getting calls from Mark Lambertus, I'm getting calls from Lacey, you know, just talking about the Lanesville job, and, I, and I'm still, I'm like, you know, I, I just can't see myself going somewhere else, you know. Um, well, it sounds like she's a good salesperson, because she closed the deal. Yeah, she closed the deal, and, you know, they, it, like, yes, uh, it, it's, uh, when, when I coached Hadley, it took me a while, because I kept, she didn't know, but you know, I would call her Lacey. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing Lacey because she looks so much like her. So, uh, you know, just watching her competitiveness, Lacey had the same kind of competitiveness out on the court too. And that was my next uh, question. So you can go ahead and go ahead into it. Like, what is the the play style of the mom and daughter? Like, is it very similar? Is it the same game? Is it who was, well, who's the better scorer? Is really what I want. Well, the better scorer would be uh, Hadley, and but they both have really good defense. But uh, the scoring. Uh, you know, Hadley does a, a, a better job, can score in more variety of ways. And Lacey really didn't have to score a lot on her. So when I watched that game, there was a lot of scores on the team. So. Yeah. So it was kind of, you know, if somebody was having an off night, you know, she was kind of like, I always call her my utility player because she could play all the defense positions that I needed her to play. And then offensively, when we need her to score, you know, she could make buckets, but she just didn't have to. So she was a good passer and, uh, you know, just a good all-around team player. Yeah. 
we're uh, we're seeing it now, like in the postseason. There's if you go look um, and at the boys, there's a lot of people that don't have like great records that are going far um, because they played such a difficult, you know, you know, regular season matchup. If you look at your guys' schedule, you aren't afraid to play anybody. You know, you played four, three, and two A and one A all season. What? But you guys won a lot of them. How do you think that prepared you for the 1A game or the 1A state game? I think it really prepared us because we, especially the, so we played an events in tournament over summer and we played like all kinds of different teams. Um, some were better than others, but we really just came together as a team and competed really well. And then when we went up to Vincennes for Christmas, like the Christmas tournament, there were some really good teams in there. Like, we met to come see again, and we played them two times in a row. And I think that was kind of just, like, a mental game that we had to get through to, like, know that we can beat them. And then Evansville Memorial, they were just, like, a really good team. And I feel like nobody was really upset after that game because we played really hard. But we kind of knew, like, we played well, and, like, we have to keep playing, like, throughout the year, just, like, kind of how we played them. And it was cool. You talked about, like, the support at New Albany. It – I mean, we've said it for years, like, lanes will travel so well. Like, the city shuts down for a regular season game, like, Purple Sea or whatever you guys are calling it. You guys, I feel like you guys had a ton of support. What was it like? And this kind of goes to my next question is, like, what advice do you give, like, young athletes um, to get where you were and to get, like, as your team was? But also, like, how was it to have the support from the young athletes this year? And, I mean, even your brother was your biggest yeah. supporter. But, like, yeah. all that becomes, like, what – what advice, and then, like, how, how was the the feeling of me having so much support? My advice probably would be, like, don't think you can't do it, because I always thought, like, everybody said, like, oh, you're going to make a state, and I was like, no, we're not. Like, I mean, we're good, but that's such a far thing, and then, like, being ranked number one, and it just kind of kept getting more real, and then I was there, and it was like, we're here. So I would just say, like, keep working, even though – if you think you can never get anywhere, like you're always getting better, you're always making your team better. Um, the support was really amazing. I cadet for a second grade class, and all the little kids, like they come to the games and they're so supportive. I mean, there's pictures in their room of them hugging me after the games. I got like 10 posters. I don't know. They're just, it's really special to have like little kids look up to you, especially my brother. I like, I got up after the state game and he hugs me and he's like still holding on to me. I'm like, what are you doing? And he just looks up and I mean, he's bawling. And I'm like, I'm just like not that emotional, but he's just bawling. He's just, I'm just so happy. And I was like, I think it was hard for him too because you go back and look at the videos that we shot at sectional, regional, and semi state. Like he was able to kind of come on the floor and be a part of it. Yeah. You could literally just like, I just kept looking because it was like a bundle of energy up there just bouncing the entire game. Like he wanted to go somewhere, but he like, wasn't allowed to, but it's awesome to have that much family support and, and your older sister too. We don't really her out, but well, just a little fact story on Bray. He actually videos our games for us, and in the background, he's commentating during the videos. So you know, he he's been very instrumental for a little young guy. I mean, I've got is he harsh to his sister? Or is he nice? No, he's, he's pretty nice. Okay, he's pretty nice, and uh, he just really they really root for the kids. I mean. And we take them, you know, wherever we could take them, we would take them with us. Because everything here is just about our community and being able to bring those guys. You know, I hate they couldn't sit by on the bench, but, you know, it's IHSA rules. But, um, you know, all along from day one through the season, I mean, they were with us. You know, they go out to eat with us and different things with us. And they're kind of like our three little coaches. And after the game, the little guys come up to me with the, their little microphone and they're interviewing me after the game. Okay. So it's pretty cool having those kids around like that. I mean, they mean a lot to us, and they support these girls, and uh, it's just fun seeing the family bonds that we have. Yeah. And talking about the family family basis, and like um, both 1999 and now, what are two like memorable moments for your team that you can remember? Like it doesn't have to be even on the court, but like just a moment that stands out to you about winning both of those times. Well, I think uh, in, in 99, uh, our Semi State game, uh, where we had to play against uh, Connersville and April McDivitt, I mean, that gym in Southport was well, sold out. And you've got college coaches that are there watching the game. And, you know, we go overtime, two overtimes to, to beat them. Uh, that was kind of like a state championship game for us. Um, and I think, you know, the thing in going to the state, 
that game was such an emotional game winning that we got off to a little bit of, of a poor start at the state, but you know, we came from behind to win that. But uh, it's just um, it's just really surreal to think about the accomplishments that you have and that to go through a season and win every game and uh, you know that state game. Um, the, you know, there are some some memorable moments because you know Lacey after the game. I remember, oh, I remember that she. I mean, she was exhausted. You know, her her body was just totally exhausted, and you know she's we're having to get her hydrated again. And I know before the game. Uh, Kenitra left her stand at, back at the hotel. We had to get a, um, a police escort to get somebody back there to get her spandex back up. She, she needed her spandex for that game. Uh, you know, it's just, just the, the, the way the people came together and did things for us uh, to make everything possible was really, really special. And, you know, talk about the tournament champions because that was a tough week because we really didn't get to celebrate like we really wanted to yeah. because you had another week that you had to prepare. And so, you know, to try to get them back, you know, locked in and focused, because you're the 4A school you're supposed to win. Yeah. So we go up there and, and get to play at Heathrow Field House, which was really a oh, cool experience. Yeah, it was a cool experience. So that it was what we tried to sell the kids on, to be able to go there and play in that historic place. Because I remember going there as a kid and watching girls say championships. So it was really, really a cool thing. Um, and then, you know, with this year, uh, with this group, it's just like every every stage of the way was kind of special. It's like we were just accomplishing things. We were beating teams that people said, "Well, you're you're not going to be able to beat this team," and we just kept you know going forward. You know, we had a couple setbacks. You know, at, at you know the important tournament. You know, but that was a good learning experience for us, and that's what really propelled us to say, "Okay, we've got to be locked in and geared. We got to really work on things." Um, we go to the Ben Sentence Tournament. That was a huge, huge step for us because from there on, you know, we're just really um, locked in on, okay, we're preparing and, and everything we're preparing for is for the end of the season. Um, and every time we would win ball games, it was like we were doing something special. It's just like things just kept falling in place for us special. Uh, you know, even our, our trip to the state where we're going and we're riding on a charter bus, and, you know, we, we've got a, a, a good guy, a, a driver for us, you know, just made us all feel really good, you know, just being able to have that experience with the kids. Uh, we tried to do everything a little bit different. We, we changed kind of the logo. We changed things that we did on our shirts, um, just things we did together as a team. Um, just It was just everything we treated it like it was the last time we were going to do something that would be the most special time we were going to do it. Uh, and when, when the state tournament, just getting up there to practice, we tried to make it as fun as we could make it. I think the kids uh, really enjoyed the experiences that we had, taking them out to eat different places. And I did see some of, the, to some of the coaches were in a TikTok dance. How come you weren't? You weren't better dancing <laughs> off the <of> TikToks? <laughs> they never invited me to something. I was excluded from something. I bet. I bet. What was the coach's name? Was in the... It was the other no, it was in. Wait, I don't think Hallie was in it. Oh, it was oh, Vince, yeah, probably, our athletic trainer. Yeah. He actually wasn't invited. He just interrupted. Okay. Yeah, Vince. I would have invited you to do it. Uh, no, I, I could have been the star of that show, <laughs> you know. But uh, I when just walking in there to Gamebridge Field House, um, you know, when I first walked out there on the floor before the game started, you look up there and you see just the sea of purple up there. And I, I tried to each game really take in the crowd and really see the faces of the people that were there. Uh, it was just amazing. I mean, it it brings tears to my eyes. It did then, and it, it also brought a calming effect. Uh, and when the, uh, when the game started, and when she hit that three, I mean, chills just kind of went through me because I knew we were all right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had confidence going in, but when you see that, I mean. That took a lot of guts to step up and make that shot. You know, I don't think her mom would have done that. But, uh, you but know, then she's, she's a lot softer now. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I wouldn't have done that. I probably wouldn't have made it. <laughs> and you talk about looking up and seeing the, the sea of purple. I think one of the coolest shots we've gotten all basketball season, boys and girls, is we actually stayed for the 2-3 and 4 state game that day. So oh, we stayed yeah. filled. Mm -hmm. But your team took the trophy from the middle. And you walked all the way down the sidelines with the trophy in the net, and you looked up, and every person waved everybody up there. 
I think. practiced that. You practiced that? We did practice that. Tell me about that. What you guys, like, was that just a conversation or was it? Well, we were, well, first off, when we were going out to the gym, well, we were getting ready for practice because I think, shoot. Bedford practiced before us. And Coach was like, I want you guys to take your phones out there, you know, take pictures. And we were like, what? We were like, <laughs> you mean this isn't like, we're not going out here and going like. And she was like, I want you to take pictures, you know, really send it to your family, soak it in. And then we get out there and then she's like, all right, everybody's still on the bench. So we're sitting there and she calls out each person. And we have to run out to the floor, wave to the stands, even though there's nobody in there. And we wave and then we just turn around and then. Yeah, so she when we were like huddled up, she's like, "Now everybody wave to the crowd like we practiced." And I felt kind of weird doing it because I felt like I was like one of the first, so I just like did it for a second, and I just kept walking. Well, it's just so cool because if you watch that shot, and I'll put it over this video, but like because of how good the lighting is, everybody that passes, you can see tears in their eyes. Like there wasn't really anybody. You might not have been crying, but it was just a super emotional experience because they're up there and they see their grandparents or their aunt or their friends, and you guys took that whole walk. And like I said. We filmed that entire day, and it really there wasn't an as special moment the entire day as that. So I just want to say, like, that was super cool. Well, you know, in all the other games, you know, everybody gets to come down to the floor and, you know, be with your kids and take pictures and all that. We couldn't do that. And it was like, man, we've got to appreciate these people. You know, you just got to look up there. And, and I just felt like that's what we should have done. You know, it, it meant a lot to us for them to be there, and we just wanted to show our appreciation for that. Well, I appreciate your guys' time today. Again, the whole reason we did this is because of the legacy of coach and mother and daughter and how they got to come and just play their hearts out at the highest level of high school basketball. So we appreciate you guys tuning in. Go ahead and share this, and we will see you next episode.